Tonight on two rap video repercussions. This video now has millions of views, and some of the people looking at it are Houston police officers. Those investigators say some of what they spotted are federal violations. That has led to arrest. Others are still wanted. Part of the video was shot in a community gathering place, Lakewood Park, right next to Hilliard Elementary. All right, what is up, everybody? Probably one of the most infamous music videos in the past decade happened down south in Houston, Texas. And that's the song Hoover by the underground phenom Maxo Cream and the up and coming local rapper NFL Cartel Bo. And yes, we saw the memes of the dude with the upside down AR 15 looking like he's about to knock that bitch out the park. This shit was controversial, right? It got millions of views, Worldstar posted it, and the music video was actually the main piece of evidence used in a massive case that led to 20 people getting arrested. The feds are looking at Instagram. They're watching Worldstar, right? It's not just the feds who watch this shit. I mean, the US Attorney's Office literally got a bulletin devoted to rap and gangs and how they could acquire evidence of the gang conspiracy, right? They've been watching. And somebody they've been looking at for a while now was Max O'Cream. In fact, this story goes a whole lot deeper. The feds think his whole rap career, his whole persona, everything is a front for laundering drug money. Rap videos often exaggerate gang life, but in this case, investigators say what you see here is, well, pretty accurate. He's out here seeing organized crime, bro. Organizing music for my album. That's Maxo Cream. He's got an extensive criminal history. Now we're gonna get into all this, but before we do, check out my song today. This is Mark Battles. Let's go. Ain't been happy in a while. I be staring in the mirror trying to force myself to smile. Can't keep blaming everybody. People do what you allow. And don't ask me how I feel, cause I'm responding back with how. How the fuck I'm supposed to feel when all my friends turn they back? How the hell I'm supposed to trust when people out here setting traps? How you expecting me to grow when I can't let my money stack? How you asking for a loan knowing you can't pay me back? How you claim to really love me? But you all right. In order to understand this story, we gotta go to Southwest Texas, just inside Houston, to a place called A Leaf. That's where Big Max O Cream is from. Now this place is a melting pot. Huge Asian community, Hispanic, black, white, you name it, is super diverse. But places that Max O Cream talks about vividly in his music, like Forum Park, Spice Lane, B Sinet, these places are about as dangerous as it gets. And that's his hood. And from what I understand, Houston is a super interesting city. Several decades ago, you had syndicates from California, like the Crips and the Bloods, actually migrate all the way over to Houston to set up shop. Since it's close to the Mexican border, they could start getting drugs wholesale from suppliers in Mexico and create distribution lines. You even got Chicago gangs like the Black Disciples and the Vice Lords that moved down from Illinois down there. My blocks, you know what I'm saying, like the blocks I be rapping about, like Spice Lane, Forum Park, them was BD blocks, you know what I'm saying, Black Disciples. Around, I guess, like, 99, the LA gangs came in, mixed with like the Houston gangs and Houston cliques too, you feel me? Many people don't know that Houston is a big distributor, man. It supplies Atlanta, Chicago, Detroit, New York, Philadelphia. All these guys are in it for the money. Uh, and if they can form partnerships, the sources of supply in Mexico can find people that can move their product and they can sell the product in Houston, as opposed to transporting themselves to New York and selling it there. Uh, that's all they're looking for. Now, if we're looking at Big Max O Cream, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at the primary color that he wears in most of his photos. You know exactly what he's rapping. And if you listen to his interview with Vlad, Vlad was perplexed that Houston adopted these West Coast gang factions. The thing that I keep seeing was 52 Hoover Gangster Crips. <laughs> yeah. Is, is that, is that, th that, that's really what they repping out there? Yeah. That's what we banging, but that's the set. But we still go off your street. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my shit is Farm Park. You know what I'm saying? 1010 Farm Park Crip. Maxo's still in his 20s, but he emanates this OG persona. I mean, for one, he's a big fella. He's big, but not just that, he's a big personality. But something people don't know is Maxo is real good with numbers. His grandfather was a civil engineer. His dad came to Texas from Nigeria and was super smart too. Maxo had no idea what his father was doing to make money until one day the feds came, knocked down the door with a bunch of canine dogs and they brought his dad in on some fraud charges. His dad was able to keep most of that shit a secret 
but he was always driving around in AMG, S500s, beautiful luxury cars. At some point, you gotta wonder. Maxo's father was very strict with him did not want his son messing with drugs. Instead, he wanted Maxo to study computer science. But Maxo had a different idea. In 2007, he started his own crew called the Cream Click. And the shit was hella diverse. It was like a choose your own toppings for gangs. We got bloods, we got vice lords in it. You right. know what I'm saying? We got cribs, we got beat. We don't really be tripping on the gang shit. Which, let him tell it, gave him this responsibility to other people. But the cream click went through a lot of shit, man. Maxo's cousin, Andrew, who rapped under the name Woodrow Cream, was accidentally shot and killed by another member while they were both high on Zannies, which changed up how Maxo viewed Zans, and he stopped doing that shit immediately. For Big Maxo, his rap career started to heat up in 2012 when Worldstar picked up his remix of Kendrick's Rigor Mortis track. Since then, Maxo's been kind of the supreme leader of the underground lyrical gangster rap, getting high praises from Pitchfork and other outlets, and his 2019 tape I really fuck with. But let the feds tell you, and they got a whole different story. They're not vibing with the music shit one bit. They think it's simply a front for what the cream click is doing behind the scenes. In 2016, Houston police brought in Maxo's whole crew on money laundering and drug trafficking charges. They say Maxo and his crew were using the US Postal Service to ship hydroponic kush from Cali to Texas. Investigators say these men were using boxes just like this to ship drugs all the way across the country. What they didn't know is that they were being watched the whole time. Over the course of the investigation, more than a thousand pounds of narcotics were trafficked. Well over 300 grand was illegally laundered. Now, importing Kush from LA to a place like Texas is more lucrative than getting it across from the border. The quality is higher from California, so you can charge a premium. And now by law, the US Postal Service can't go through your mail without a warrant. That's another reason runners used USPS rather than FedEx or any other carrier. The main problem is you gotta disguise the smell, right? The packaging is key. But once the shit is shipped over state lines, it's ruled to be interstate commerce, which means the DEA and the feds handle everything. They had been watching Maxo's click for quite some time, tracking packages until finally they issued a warrant and swooped in. They brought everybody with them. The Sheriff's Office, Texas Department of Public Safety, Houston, Texas Anti-Gang Unit, the SWAT, Crime Reduction Unit, Midwest Divisional Gang Unit, and the West Side Hotspot Unit, everybody. They raided multiple houses, recovered 85 pounds of Kush, 2,000 Zanny pills, 13 weapons, body armor, cash, jewelry, and the packaging they were using to make shipments. So it was a big cleanup. Now I'm gonna be honest, it's been almost four years, I don't know the status of the case, but Maxo's out, he's doing his thing, going to cities, doing shows, and the rest of the clique from what I understand was also out as well. Maxo is banned from Canada, he's banned from leaving the States, he even got banned from his own hometown, Alif. You were on tour with them and they wouldn't let you into Canada. Yeah, they ain't let me into Canada. Do you still live right in that up. same area? Hell nah, I can't. You can't. The cops, nah, I'm banned. I'm banned from A-Leaf, bro. Really? They be saying I'm exciting gang rides and all this other shit. That's why at first I couldn't even perform like that in Houston. But that didn't stop them from filming the infamous Hoover video in 2018 with NFL Bo. They went to East Houston to a place called Lakewood Park to film this. The featured rappers chose Lakewood Park next to Hilliard Elementary School to shoot their video. They did it at about the same time school was letting out. Some of the kids actually got into the video. Now this is zero judgment just from what I get. You don't do shit near a school. It's just a recipe for disaster. Now, of course, the song Hoover is in reference to the set that he bangs, which is the 52 Hoover Crips. That's why the whole aesthetic of the video is blue. And it's a dope video, but some people in the area were like, hell no, not near a school. So they called the cops who got there towards the end of the video shoot. Most of the people in the video dropped their weapons and dipped, including NFL cartel Bo. They later caught up to him, charged him for illegal possession of two assault rifles, let him out on bail, where he then caught off his ankle monitor and went on the run until finally getting arrested at the airport in Houston. They gave him six and a half years in prison. I'm sorry, that's petty. Now as for Maxo, he managed to dodge all the charges. I don't think he was holding any guns in the video, but police did use the World Star upload to identify each person with a weapon and compare that to the guns that they recovered at the scene. That's how they booked over 20 people. Super petty. But yeah, man, Maxo dodged all that shit. He's still on his independent grind, doing tons of features with 
up and coming artists and he's just been getting to the money man he's also been giving back to the community to the nurses during the whole corona thing he was supplying them which is huge a beautiful move but unfortunately a couple months ago his younger brother who's been with maxo every step of the way doing business with him and everything his name is money do he was unfortunately shot and killed in la just outside his apartment in the woodland hills and maxo man this is a guy who lost his cousin lost his brother just a terrible terrible thing and that's it for this video let me know what you want me to do a video on next in the comments below make sure you subscribe with notifications on and i will see you in the next one